Welcome. My name is Catherine, and today I'm going to share three of my 45 records, and I'm going to show you the box I keep them in. I organized these in chronological order of release. So the first one I'm going to show you is from 1959. It's the oldest record in my collection. This is Bill Phillips' Sea of Love. It was released July of 1959 on Mercury Records. His record producer is George Caroni. Now John, um, Phil Phillips is a stage name. His real name is John Philip B Baptiste and his producer had him change his name for record sales. And this is actually a second pressing. The first pressing was on the Coroni label and it was distributed to record stores and sales, but the song became a hit and it was in demand. So they sold the contract to Mercury Records for more pressings. And it actually sold over a million copies in the United States. It peaked at number one on the US Billboard R&B chart and number two on the Hot 100. Now, this is the only song that he ever recorded and I'm gonna tell you why. He basically was ripped off. He didn't realize the contract he signed. And I have a quote that I found on the internet. Um, he was only paid $6,800 to record this song. And he received no royalties for the song. And he said in a quote, because I just decided to fight for what was rightly and legally mine, a full album I recorded was never released and I'm not being paid, nor have I ever been paid as an artist for the sea of love. And I never received justice. So this is really sad. He did a few songs for some other artists and he later worked as a radio DJ. So he was still involved in music and he still performed and sang. In October 2007, Phillips was honored for his contributions to Louisiana music with an induction into the Louisiana Music Hall of Fame. One of his last performances was in 2005. He participated in the Jazz Festival in New Orleans and that was in April of 2005. And the video of that is on YouTube. And he passed away March 15th of 2020 at the age of 94 years old. It is a sad story, but at least fans of this record and myself too, we know he wrote it. And many people love this song. I mean, it's been played at weddings. So people have good memories of song, this song. And it's a 50s standard. So I'll leave a link in the description so you can listen to this song. He has a wonderful voice and he's a very talented singer. And I hope you enjoy it. The next record I'm going to show is called The Lion Sleeps Tonight by The Tokens. Now, as a little kid, I absolutely love this song. It's a fun sing along. It was released in 1961 and the label is. RCA Victor. And I'm going to point out the writers on this pressing. It's George David Weiss, Hugo Peretti, and Luigi Creator. This song went number one quickly in the U.S. and became an international hit, and it sold millions. But what I want to talk about is who originally wrote the song. The original song was written by an African man named Solomon Linda. He lived in South Africa. He was a Zulu singer, and he worked for the Gallo Record Company in Johannesburg. He worked as a cleaner and a record packer. Linda spent his weekends performing with his musical group, The Evening Birds, and under the direction of the producer at that record company, his name was Griffith Matsiola, Linda and The Evening Birds uh, recorded a few songs and one of the songs was called Mwumbe and that means the lion in the Zulu language. So that was the original song and it was issued by Gallo Records on a 78 RPM record in 1939. 
and it was marketed to black audiences, both in South Africa and in the UK. And it sold millions of copies. It became a hit, and he became very famous and well-known in his South African country. Well, in 1949, a man named Alan Lomax, who was a folk music director of Decca Records, had a copy of Solomon Linda's 78 record. In November of 1951, after performing the song for one year in their concerts, the Weavers recorded a folk version of Mwemboe. Their song was titled Wimboe, and this is a misheard lyric from the original song chorus, which was Uyimboe, which means you are the lion in the Zulu language. The song Wimboe reached the top 10 on the Billboard charts. And this was the first incident of copyright infringement on Solomon Linda's song. The second significant copyright issue was the Tokens cover by George David Weiss, who added English lyrics to the song. It starts out, in the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. Now, on this record, there's no writing credits given to Solomon Linda at all. And this Tokens version became an international hit. It's the song that most of us know, and it's a standard. And they also begin collecting royalties and making millions thereafter. So this is a very complicated story. I'm keeping it brief. In 2000, South African journalist Ryan Milan wrote an article for Rolling Stone magazine. He told Solomon Linda's story and estimated the song had earned 15 million for its use in the Disney movie, The Lion King. So in 2004, Solomon Linda's children were helped to file a lawsuit against the Disney company and the others involved. Solomon Linda's estate won the case. The Lion Sleeps Tonight is now given credit to songwriter Solomon Linda, and it's because it's deeply rooted in African culture, and it right, rightly, rightfully belongs to him because he created the words in Zulu and the melody as well. I'm going to show you one of the piano books I have. It was published in 2019. This is the sheet music to the, to the Lion Sleeps Tonight. And up here, it lists the three token members and Solomon Linda's name is on this. So he's given writing credits for it. And that's a wonderful thing. The story had a good ending. There is a Netflix documentary that was aired in 2019. It's called The Lion Share. And I saw this documentary. It's probably still available to stream, but it goes in great deal of the whole story and it's a good documentary. In the description, I'm gonna leave a link to the original record recording of Muimbwe by Solomon Linda and the Evening Birds. I hope you will give this original song a listen. It's a great piece of history of a humble man who just wrote a song. And before he died, he, he said, I'm so glad people appreciate my song all over the world and it brings them joy. The last record I'm gonna show today is um, Let's Hang On by the Four Seasons. And this was released in September of 1965 on the Phillips label. We have writers Bob Crew, who's the manager of the Four Seasons, Sandy Linzer, and Denny Randall. And this reached number three on the Billboard Hot 100. This is one of my favorite songs by the Four Seasons. It has an upbeat dance rhythm. It's full of hooks and it has sing-along lyrics. And there's great guitar work in it too. 
And I will leave a link in the description of the Four Seasons performing Let's Hang On. And in 1984, Barry Manilow did a cover of this song. And there were no <laughs> copyright issues. He gives credit to those writers I just men mentioned. So those are the first three records in my box. I plan to share the rest of them. I have songs from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and a couple from the 90s too. There's a lot of variety in the box. So I thank you for watching this video. Um, I hope you will look at those links and listen to all three of those songs. And please share your thoughts in the comments about these songs. These are good songs from the past and they're fun. And I'll see you in the next video.